We're already on. We're already on. It's okay. I got it. Hey guys, I just got the video started early so that I could start sharing the links where we needed to. So um, just wanted you guys to know, give people some time um, to, to find us and make sure that they knew we were live. So give me a few minutes and then we'll get started. Y'all should be able to see me and my screen. Um, so, and we're trying a new software today that allows us to do both things. So. Be patient with me as I try to figure some of this out. So um, give us a couple of minutes. We're going to start right around 10 o'clock. I'm just going to let people get logged in and find us, okay? Hey guys. Good morning. Hello. All right, we got some people joining us still. Um, just making sure everyone has a chance to find our video. Oh, well, good. I'm glad you're here to join us then this morning. Can everyone hear me okay? Good. All right, good. I am Just getting logged in, guys. Give us just a minute. <laughs> Happy Wednesday to you. Is your Wi-Fi working okay, Mark? How about yours, Kristen? Good morning. No, it's not just for social media advertising. We're gonna be going over our new name management tool today which launched earlier this week. And then we're also gonna be going over um, 
some of our new FAQs on our website, talking to you guys about where to find those, also just answering some questions in general. Now that the rules are in effect, we wanted to make sure you guys had a chance to kind of uh, interact with us. We have one of our general counsels here. I'm gonna bring her on in just a little bit after I do the demo of our name management tool. And um, wanted you guys to uh, have a chance to see that and then also ask your questions. So um, anyway, yeah, it's generally advertising, Jeremy. Um, okay, guys, I am, it's 10 o'clock. Um, for the people that are already joined, um, little heads up, what I'm doing today is I am um, trying some new software that allows us to share our screen as well as you can see me. So just as a heads up, if for some reason the video cuts out, I will start a new live video just after that. Um, so don't worry, I'll be back. Um, we're trying to interact with you as much as we can. Uh, the, today's session is gonna be focusing on our new name management tool that just launched this week. Um, and then going over some of our FAQs, answering your questions about advertising in general, not just for social media, but if you have questions about social media, uh, we can probably tackle those as well. Uh, so I'm gonna give a couple more minutes for people to be able to find us, and then we're gonna get started, okay? Ooh, we have 75 people on. Um, go ahead and say hi and let us know where you're from, and uh, let me know if you have any questions. I will get our staff. We have our director of enforcement here in the room with us, as well as one of our general counsels on hand to answer your questions. So we'll be ready to go. Um, I'm just gonna give us like one more minute to, to get us all logged in. Um, say hi, join us, let me know your questions. Can everyone hear me okay too? Oh good, all right. Oh, hey, well, Candy, awesome, you have 38 people there with you. That's great. Hello to all of your students from Austin. Um, wow, people from all over Texas, that's great. Oh, awesome, all right. Abor GRI is here. Um, okay. Um, we're just trying to get a couple of kinks worked out, so give, uh, give us a, a second. We're just, uh, we have some internet connectivity issues and we're just trying to make sure we have everything set up before I start going over everything for y'all. Wi-Fi? I am. These guys need. My, my, yeah, my hard wire is working just fine. It's the, okay. All right, guys. So um, we're just going to go ahead and make do with what we have today. I'm going to just relay the questions to our staff members here instead of having them live answer them for you. So just be a little bit patient. We'll make sure if we don't answer your questions right away, we will get back to them. So let me get started by first uh, saying um, hi. My name is Christine Anderson. I'm the Public Affairs Specialist for the Texas Real Estate Commission and Appraiser Board. Um, I am going to start today's session off with a quick walkthrough of our new name management tool, which is a tool launched. Uh, it was launched on, I think, Tuesday. Um, it went live, uh, uh, and it, it, it's a tool allowing broker business entity license holders as well as individual brokers to manage their uh, their names, what we call alternate names, DBAs, and uh, team names with the agency. It coincides with the uh, how you get in compliance with our new advertising rules and the team names um, that have been added to those rules. So this, this new tool was designed here at TREC for everyone to be able to easily and free, best of all, um, be able to... Uh, manage all of their names, get everything into compliance, make sure that they have everything categorized the way they should be. And today I'm gonna to kind of help answer any questions that you have about names in general and how they should be managed, as well as um, kind of show you a walkthrough of the tool. So first things first, uh, again, for those that were um, not here when I first logged in, we're trying new software today. If for some reason I end this video by accident, um, I will start a new one right away afterwards. Just sit tight, rejoin, um, and we'll finish it out. And what I'll do is put everything together in a YouTube video for everyone to share. So 
please be kind. We are trying new software and new tools all the time, and this is the first time we're doing this one. So good luck to all of us. So um, anyway, I here, is that better? Can everyone see me now? Hello. Hi, guys. OK. Um, wow, we've got people from all over the state. That's great. Um, 100 people on here today. And I've been told we have several classes. So um, getting started, uh, first of all, what I'd like you to do is um, um, first take note, we, uh, we have our new website here. And on our new website is um, an announcement in this, uh, in this banner image here that shows the name management tool launched. If for some reason after this session, you're trying to figure out where to find all of this information, this page here is a really great resource. It shows you how to use the tool. I've also prepared kind of a screen grab version of the um, of how to use the tool here. It's quick four minutes. So if anyone needs to share that with friends or people that weren't able to attend this, it's a great uh, tool. That's also on YouTube as well. So you can find our YouTube channel on our homepage and go ahead and, and, and go there to, to find the link for that. Um, but that being said, what I'm going to do is show you a test version of our uh, and walk you through live and um, First things first, what you're going to do is go to our homepage, log in up here using your username and password, the same one that you use every time you go to renew your, your license or apply for a new license. So that's up here. And for some reason, if you've forgotten it, you can always reset your password. Keeping in mind, though, that the last time you maybe renewed your license, you were with a different brokerage. So we need to make sure that you have everything um, that, that you used the last time. People a lot of the time get confused with you, what username they used because they just don't have access to that email address anymore. If that's the case, you would need to contact Trek. We can reset everything for you and disassociate your account with your old email address. So um, after you log in, you're, um, you're going to be brought to a quick start menu. Um, here, this quick start menu is uh, the home page for where you base you land anytime you try to renew a license or um, you try to uh, here I'm going to move my my screen over here so you guys can see this better um, anytime you go to renew or apply for a license this is where you're going to go so this is your home page here you can see I have a couple of different licenses uh, attached to this account. Um, so a couple of them are in their renewal period. And then just below that, though, if you don't have any licenses, this section is not showing. This would be showing first. But just in case, change your license information and manage sponsorships. You can see here I have a real estate LLC. That's a, a corporate broker license. Again, this is only available right now for corporate brokers and sale, uh, corporate brokers and individual brokers who are um, trying to uh, manage their names. So um, in here, you'll, you'll pick the license that you want to update. And then you're going to go to the drop-down menu and select Name Management Tool. After that, you're going to click Select. And that's going to bring you to our brand new Name Management Tool, hoping everything is going well. So um, on this Name Management Tool here, you can see that we, uh, we have the license that you're trying to update. And you can see that we have, um, uh, you know, basically three columns on this page. I'm going to make myself a little bit smaller so that y'all can see this page a little bit better. So here you can see we have our three columns, a name list, instructions, and then this, what, what I'll explain later is our buckets. First things first, your name list. This is the list of all of the names you have registered for your brokerage with TREC. That could be alternate names, it could be DBAs, and it can be team names if you have already uh, have team names or if you had team names registered as an alternate name for some reason. Um, so you can see over here we have all of them. You can sort and filter and add a name if you'd like um, there. So then in addition, sorry guys, we have uh, people helping us get uh, some of our internet stuff uh, fixed. So sorry for the background noise there. Just again, please be patient. So. Um, so over here, you have your list that is um, going to have, sorry, everything good now? Yeah. Awesome. Thank you. Sorry about that, guys. OK, so over here, here's my list of names. And then each icon next to them explains what type of name it's currently categorized as. So I have a couple of DBAs and a couple of team names. In this middle section, we have what each um, uh, 
type, name type, uh, and what the description is technically here with the agency. Um, so because I know like with the association, sometimes they call it a nickname instead of a, an alternate name. So um, that's where all of this explanation is comes in really helpful for you as you go to manage your names. You can kind of see who is, um, what name should be what. So um, again, the icon here, DBA, is a little um, office or building. Team name is a little group of people. An alternate name is this ID card. Um, a little quick tip, uh, alternate name is uh, anything that is not what is going to be on your license or is a common quote unquote derivative uh, of your name. So for example, my name's Christine Anderson, but if I go by, um, as my general counsel mentioned yesterday, a great name, Sunshine, and everyone calls me Sunshine, uh, and I advertise as Sunshine, then that needs to be a registered DBA. And, um, uh, or sorry, alternate name, I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> registered alternate name. Um, because we need people to be able to find you. Um, and But if, you know, your name is William and you go by Bill, Technically, you don't need to register that as an alternate name, but it's free and easy to do now, so might as well just go ahead and do it just so that you're uh, super searchable. Plus, there's no downside for uh, for people being able to find you, right? So, so I would highly recommend you just go ahead and do it. But according to our rules, it needs to, it's anything that's not a common derivative of a name. So I'm going to go quickly over here and see if we have any new questions. No, no, no new questions. Okay, good. Hi, guys. Um, okay, going back to the name management tool. Um, so this list here, some features of the list. You can edit a name by clicking this little icon over here and editing an, a name. Let's say you want to go Jon Snow and Christine team. And then you select, you click off of it and it's updated. And you want that name to now not be a, a DBA. You want it to be a team name. You select team name, and now you uh, now it's a team name. Keep in mind, all team names either need to add, end in team or group. That's really important um, as we continue to show you this tool because a lot of the times when you try to move things around, if, a, a, if you want something to be under team, it needs to be ending in team or group. So um, here you can see if I tried to move this, this uh, name over to team, oh, that might also be DBA verification. So if I were to move something back over to DBA, do you have legal authority to use this name in the state of Texas? Yes. And is this the name for use by a small group of license holders within the brokerage? No. Done. Now it's a DBA. So, and then... If you'd like to add a new team, you can add a new team or DBA by clicking the select the icon that you'd like to uh, click. Here's the definition again here. And then you're going to click um, my awesome team. There you go. Now it ends in team because it's a team name. And I'm going to add it. And now you can see over here that that team name has been added to the list and it's identified as a team. Um, let's say you come in here when you log in the first time and you see a bunch of really old DBAs from either or alternate names from agents that you no longer sponsor, um, group names that you no longer use. You can delete these names too by clicking the little trash icon and that is going to be deleted. You can see over here it's now crossed out. So going over to our buckets, let me move myself away from there so that you're over here. You can see now that the edits I've made are reflected here with pending, a little pin in it and pending, right? So none of these have been completed, they're just pending. These buckets over here are the same list that's over here in this name list, but they're now filtered for you in a more visual way for you guys to see how they're categorized. Um, I find it helpful and then you can see like, okay, I, I have all of my team names in the right bucket and I have all of my DBAs in the right bucket. So um, let's say you're all done and you're good with these, how everything's categorized. Um, remember that um, for business entities, you need to make sure that everything is categorized correctly. 
um, you can't complete this the, the first time you log in, we're not going to let you uh, keep things the way that they were incorrectly. So you need to make sure that everything's accurate when you go to complete this. Okay, let's say you're done, everything's accurate. You go in and you click confirm changes and you're going to certify that you're allowed to use those names and that everything's correct, right? So you have to click agree in order to submit the changes to us. Once you click submit, you're going to get a receipt page that shows everything has been changed. This little green checkbox, woohoo, everything's done. And you can see here that everything was um, moved to a team versus, um, and then this one's uh, deleted and that everything's complete. So one uh, insider or tip that I'd like to make sure everyone is aware of, when you complete this transaction, unlike some of your other interactions with Streck, you're not going to get an email confirmation. This, this tool doesn't have that capability yet. So I highly recommend you go ahead and click on print. Print this, save it as a PDF, or just print it out and have it for your records. That way, for some reason, if anything ever came up that we did not have an updated version of this, you have it in your records that you went ahead and did it. Um, I also uh, want to say that this tool is done uh, so it's free. And what's great is it's, uh, it's almost immediate that this update happens. You're updating our database for us, right? So um, on our website, everything will be reflected uh, the next day. But as of that day, once you click confirm, it is done in our database. Our website will be updated the next day as that tool is updated overnight. But as far as our system is concerned, you are good to go as soon as you click confirm and you have this page come up. So with that, then um, when I click close, you're going to be brought back to your quick start menu. I've been logged in for too long, so it logged me out. But um, that's, that's the basis of the tool. That's how it works. Again, if for some reason you want to go back and see that how-to again, you're going to see um, you can go to our home page of our website. And um, right now, it's listed on, on this uh, image slider, name management tool launched. You're going to select that article. And on here, we have an explanation of the tool, how it's used, and even um, a, a helpful little video. At the bottom, I also included links to all of our other Facebook Live uh, sessions on advertising, how to get in compliance, all of our articles, and... Um, and just other things that we published that might be helpful for you guys as you're trying to get into compliance. So um, that being said, that's a pretty quick and, and easy version of the tool. Does anyone have any questions for me as far as like how to manage? Um, uh, do you need th the document showing we have the DBA? So Mary, um, it looks like uh, maybe Mark has answered your question. No, okay. So. Uh, you don't need a, uh, if we asked for it for some reason, then yes, but, but in order to complete the transaction, no, you don't need to submit anything to us saying you're just going to verify on that, um, on that when you, when you do the attestation at the end, it's basically like a legal, yes, this is me. I'm allowed to use this DBA. You know, we're assuming you've done all the things you need to do to be able to use the DBA and, uh, and with us and, and that and that allows you to use the uh, use it, so you're not having to like submit paperwork to us later for us to process. Does that does that help? Is someone going through and mentioning DBAs, team names, and alternate names for compliance once they're submitted? Um, again, that comes back to you at the end of your transaction are going to say, well, first of all, you're not allowed to create a team name that doesn't end in team or group and thus would be in compliance with our rules. And then, um, and only brokers and uh, brokers, business entities and individuals are the only ones allowed to use the tool. So it's not like an agent's going to be able to go in and access this tool and then um, create a bunch of stuff. They're, they have to use their broker to do this and thus the broker is responsible to make sure that everything is in compliance with our rules. Um, and then, uh, and then at the end of your transaction, again, you're confirming that you are allowed to use those names and that everything is accurate. So here at the agency, we're, we're taking that attestation, the check mark that yes, you're, you are good as, um, you're able to use that and you're good. So, um, we're not going to be like going through and checking every single one of these to make sure that they're all accurate. Obviously, if there was a complaint filed against you 
And we needed to, to, and we took a look at everything and we were like, well, that's obviously not a compliance. Then that's when you would probably be caught. But no, we want you to be able to do this easily and quickly and for free without needing to wait on us to approve everything for you. So I hope that answers your question. So Diane says, as a broker, do I need to have all of my agents included on, a comp on my company website? There is two of them that are under me, but have not done any business in the last two years and they're um, part-time. I would rather not have them on there um, if I don't have to. I'm gonna double check with Mark. Uh, Mark uh, Moore is our director of enforcement and so he's a good guy to have here today. And he says no um, and uh, you're, you're fine. Um, I would say this, uh, this question has come up a lot in the compliance matters for this um, is a lot of people are asking, well, how do I get um, in compliance when it comes to social media and um, my website? There is part of our rule, and I like to refer to this as one click, as long as your uh, profile and your social media pages are, you have one click to get to your profile, I'm sorry, from your profile to your homepage that is in compliance with our rules then your Facebook page, your any um, social media that you're using for business purposes, um, it, doesn't, it doesn't have to have like every um, uh, IABS posted and it doesn't have to have, um, it, it's basically we're, we're saying it's okay that as long as you have a link to it in your profile, that's, and that link is, the next link is in compliance with all the rules. So your, your website's in compliance, then you're fine. Um, I hope that helps answer that question. Uh, when a broker uses the paper form to register a DBA or team name, is that effective as soon as they mail it or do they have to wait until it's processed with TREC? Um, so we have something called a mailbox rule. As long as it's post dated by the time that it's sent to the agency, it is good. Uh, that being said, now that you have, and you'd have to pay to do that, as long as, uh, now that we have this tool, you don't need to do any of that anymore. You can just log in, do it, and it's done uh, for free. Instead of having it, I think it's $20 to, to send it via paper. So there's really no reason to do it via paper unless like you just really wanted to do it on paper and pay. So, um, and again, once you do it online, it's done for free and done immediately. So I would highly recommend you go that way. I'm not sure I understand, Diane says, they are a licensed agent and I hold their license. Right, Diane. Um, again, you don't need to have, um, as far as advertising, are, if those agents are advertising um, and they have a team or a group, um, yes, you'd need to have their names registered, uh, like a team or a group, those part-time agents, if they had some sort of team or group that were working under you, um, then yes, you'd have to update their names. Um, Visual examples of what um, exactly are you are you asking about? Um, hold on, while you type your question, I have another for DBAs. Um, okay, sorry, great point. Thanks. That's why we have attorneys in the room with me because I am not one. So, um, so legal authority to use the names. That was a question that somebody was bringing up, and for DBAs, um, that's registered with the county. So that's how we identify legal authority to use that name. So again, you have to have that DBA registered with the county that you're working in. Um, and for business entities, partnerships, companies, LLC, that needs to be registered with the Secretary of State. Again, that's how we define legal authority. So when you are checking off the box of, I have legal authority to use this name, that's what we're referring to. You have done those things to use the DBA in the business entity or to use that business entity. Um, so I hope that answers your question um, or clears things up, what we mean by legal authority. Um, those lawyers will keep me in line every time. Um, yes, uh, Juan, I will have this video available uh, later on, but we actually already have a quick four-minute shareable video on our website already as a walkthrough for this tool as well as a resource page for this. Um, I shared it in the event page for today. Um, but it's also on our homepage here. I'll navigate back to it for you guys. Um, just again, just in case somebody missed it. It's on our homepage here. You're going to go to our website, and right now it's under Name Management Tool. Again, a quick insider tip. 
everything on our website is searchable. So let's say in six months you come back and you've decided you need to update it and you can't figure out how to access it or you can't remember how to use it. Um, just put in name management tool on the site search and the page will come up. But for right now, it's on our homepage, the second option down on the image slider. And here is a name management tool page we've created with this helpful video here of a walkthrough of how to use the tool. So hopefully that helps you one. You already can share all of that. So, um, and so Rachel asks, so if you link your social media account to your company website homepage, that's it. No need to post consumer notice and IABS on social media, just the website. Just want to confirm. Um, so the, the, I believe the technical part of the rule is this. If there's a limitation on the website, like if you can't manage, if you, uh, so Facebook is a weird um, exception that um, Facebook doesn't technically have a limitation. You can publish that. But the way that the requirements for publishing that um, IABS specifically, so this is a different thing. This is not advertising. This is IABS posting, which people tend to put, put them together. Um, when you're posting IABS, um, originally when we posted these rules, there was actually no way to fully comply with the requirements of posting the IABS and on social media. Um, so what we did was create um, the one-click rule, meaning that you don't have a way to control how social media presents your information, and you can't always post um, completed pages um, on, our, on your social media account. So what we have said is if in your user profile you have a link to your home page and on that home page is uh, the home page is in compliance with the requirements of IABS and consumer notice posting, then you are okay. It's kind of a, a way for us to simplify things for you. So again, if you're on Twitter, and your Twitter handle, user profile, if somebody, if like a consumer needed to find your, find you and figure out who's in charge, they can click on your user profile and one click away is your home page that's in compliance and they can find everything. That is fine. You do not need to have your IABS somehow posted on every single tweet that you post. Um, that would be extremely cumbersome. So uh, that's, that's how we cleaned up that rule. That was, um, that was cleaned up, I think in November. Um, of this year uh, as, a, as a cleanup in the rule. Um, sorry, I don't remember the dates that they were published, but that is, that's, that's kind of the, the go-to rule for you. Um, so I hope that helps Rachel answer your question. Um, just clarifying, I have an unusual name, but I go by Ty, Talitha. I'm sorry, I, I probably but butchered your name. Um, is that okay, or do I need to an alternate name? You know what, Ty? I would just go ahead and register that alternate name. You know, uh, it never hurts to to have it and disclose it and and register. And because it's free, why wouldn't you? And that way, then you're sure it's done. Again, um, uh, you know, if you're a sales agent, you need your um, your broker to do that. Or uh, again, if you're a sales agent and managing your alternate names, you're still going to have to go through the old way of, uh, of letting us know via paper your alternate name. But if you're a broker, you can do that now uh, all managed online. And I will say that a uh, second phase of this tool is allowing all agents to manage their alternate names um, with us. Again, agents can only um, have alternate names. The only people that can manage DBAs and team names are brokers. Again, um, a lot of the times uh, agents think that a team name is their name, but it's really not. It's their broker's name. It's registered with their broker. A DBA that you're using in your marketing and, sit and advertising um, is registered with your broker. So this tool is only available for brokers because they're really the only ones that can do this. So um, I hope that helps. Can team or group be at the beginning? No, it cannot, Sean. It needs to be at the end of a name. So again, that it, that in that tool, it's built in. You cannot create a team or group name that it doesn't end in team or group. It will stop you from doing that. Um, so I hope that that's a simple and easy answer. So um, moving on, I'm gonna, we can always circle back to more questions like this. We're gonna keep this going, keep the interaction going. 
The second part of today is also to highlight and go over some of our new FAQs we've published on our website. Um, we created these FAQs um, earlier this month and published them, and we want to make sure you guys know how to find them, A, um, clarify them if you need them clarified, and also uh, if there's any more that need to be published on there, you can ask your question and we'll see if we think it's worthy of an FAQ and we'll post it on the website. So first things first, um, I'm going to navigate to the FAQ page on our website, and then I'm going to uh, bring in one of our general counsels, Kristen, to kind of go over some of those, those really frequently asked, frequently, frequently asked questions and uh, highlight some of our, our most popular FAQs, clarify them, go into detail with them, and then we'll go ahead and, and open this back up for more conversation. So that being said, um, so, oh, uh, Betty asked, alternate names do not need to be registered with the county or state, question mark. No, they do not. That is only with us. And again, think of it from what tre why TREC exists. TREC exists to, as a consumer protection agency. So this helps me, at least, when I'm trying to explain the rules to people. The reason we have these things in place is so that a consumer can find you, right? So we want them to be able to go to our website and put in Thai, for example, and be able to find uh, your license, your license information, and if that's an alternate name that you use, then we need to have that information in order for consumers to be able to find you. I hope that's clear for you um, and helps answer the question, but no, the alternate names do not need to be registered with the county or state. Okay, um, so I'm going to shrink myself back down and go over here to our homepage. Um, okay, so when you are on our homepage, first things first, again, everything is searchable, so you can put in the word FAQ and it would take you to it, or a keyword, let's say you're trying to find advertising, uh, you can put in the word advertising and probably of any of our pages that are tagged with the word advertising is gonna come up. But if you want an easy way to navigate to our FAQs, you're gonna go to public and frequently asked questions right here, and under that, you're gonna find this FAQ page. Um, so on this page, you can see here we have um, all of our FAQs tagged by license type or category. If you navigate to advertising as the category and apply that, you're gonna see here, boom, advertising FAQs, all here, and we have quite a few. So with that, because I don't think anyone wants me to go through each individual one and read to you all, um, I'm going to have Kristen Warman, who is our Assistant General Counsel here for TREC, join me on screen to answer any of your questions um, and go over some of our FAQs. But I just wanted you guys to know how to navigate to that, as I know we're all still getting used to how to use our um, website. So Kristen, if you want to scooch on over um, here, uh, and see. Hi guys, here's Kristen, hold on. Kristen is, uh, I have my chair really high up and Kristen has hers really low. So we look awfully silly together. <laughs> hold on, let's see. I will see if I can shrink mine down. No, of course not. Okay, yeah. well, here we go. We'll make it work. Kristen's not, I mean, um. she's short, but she's not that short. <laughs> okay. Um, technical, difficulties. technical difficulties. It's all good. Um, okay, so uh, Kristen, thank you for joining us today. So um, we published a bunch of FAQs. These rules are now in effect. What have you heard the most? What is the biggest question that people ask every time? What do we have to have on our signs? Okay, and simple. Simple. You have to have two things on your signs. You have to have your broker's name and you have to have your broker's contact information. Broker's name and broker's contact information. Yes, you can put your name on the sign as well, but at a minimum, you have to have your broker's name and your broker's contact information, so the phone number. Okay. And that's it, it's really pretty simple. If uh, you're putting your sales agent's name, you can do that too, because obviously you want people to know that you're the person responsible for the listing, and right. so they can contact you. And they know how to perhaps get in to see the house or make an offer on the house. Right. But um, the two things, the two primary things you have to have are the broker's name and the broker's contact information. Okay, well that's easy. I mean, 
I hope that's easy. Okay. Ooh. Okay. So um, let's see broker's name, broker's contact information. And then as long as you have registered everything and updated everything, which is why the new name tool is so helpful, then it should be pretty easy to manage those names and make sure that your information is in compliance, right? That's right. Because does a broker's name count, like if you have team name on, on there, is that considered your broker's name? If the broker uses that team name as their name and that's what they advertise under, then yes, you could use that name if it's the broker's name. Right. So the broker's name could be the name like Sally Jones. Okay. It could be a partnership like Sunshine Realty. Okay. And it could be the broker's DBA. Um if they've registered Sunshine Realty as a DBA, or you know, perhaps that's a partnership. If it is a business entity or DBA, as long as it is your broker's name and the name that your broker does business under, then you can use that name on your business signs. Oh, awesome. Okay. Um, again, besides today, uh, Juan wants to know if he wants live video with questions. Well. Juan, we've actually done like three of these already on advertising, and I think people probably want us to cover advertising, which is why we've made it available. But I don't know if we're going to do another live session specifically on advertising for a little while. Uh, we're, we're really focusing on it the last few months to make sure everyone was ready. But um, I think we're going to start focusing on some other stuff this summer. We'll see. Who knows? If people really demand it, yeah, we'll be available. We're always here to answer questions. And these videos are available on our website at all times and on YouTube um, and on Facebook actually. So we, we try to make everything as available as possible, but yeah, I don't, I don't know if we're going to do another one of these live sessions anytime in the near, near future, but for now. Well, and I guess it would depend on the types of questions yeah. that we get. If we continue right. to get a lot of questions about advertising, then yes, we would definitely consider doing another live video specifically related to advertising. Okay. So Michael says, does, uh, or sorry, Michael says, uh, there's two. Oh, okay. Michael says, does the broker name and number need to be a certain size? That is an yes. FAQ on the website too. It is. Yeah. It has to be half the size of your name and phone number. So if your name and phone number is in 24 point font size, then your broker's name and phone number need to be in 12 point font. And was that the same safe harbor sizing that we had in the last, like the last yes, iteration of the rules? So that's not anything that new, guys. That hasn't changed. It's not anything new. Okay. And that is an FAQ on the website. So if people ask, uh, please share that information as it is, it is available and you can share that FAQ itself um, and send it off to people if you have questions. Or if you see a, a friend of yours that's not in compliance, you can just say, hey, this, this is how you figure it out. Um, we find that that's always helpful. Friendly reminders right now is where we're headed. So um, can an agent use properties as part of their name? Properties is not one of the prohibited words. There are certain prohibited words are. that uh, you cannot use in your team name. And that is an FAQ on our website as well. It is. And Realty, I'm sure all of you guys heard, um, Realty was one that was originally proposed and actually adopted as a prohibited word but has since been uh, the commission took action at their last meeting did, yes. to, to not keep realty as a prohibited word, meaning you can use realty in your team names and, uh, all, and DBAs, right? Yes. DBAs it always was. It was the team name yes. that was updated. So I hope that helps. Can you clarify an earlier statement? It was stated that, sorry, Kinski. Oh, maybe Mark's answering your question for me. Um, Kinski says, it was stated that the broker's name and the broker's contact information are required on an advertisement. However, the rule only requires the name of the license holder or the team name at, and the broker's name. Oh, okay. Kinski is one of the uh, one of the attorneys for TAR. So if anyone's going to catch yes. it, it's going to be another attorney, yes. Kristen. <laughs> um, I'm sorry, Kinski. Yes, it's the broker's name and it's your contact information. So your name and contact, and then your broker's name. The broker's name is what has to be half the size of 
the agent's name and contact information. And um, again, Mark is over there answering some of our questions for us, um, and he referred to the definition of contact information means any information that can be used to contact a license holder featured in the advertisement, including a name, phone number, and an email address, website address, social media handle. Um, so that being said, I, I hope that helps clarify the question, Kinski. Sorry for the confusion. That's a great yes, question. Yes, didn't mean to create any misunderstanding there. Um, so, uh, okay. So is there any, another, while people are posting, I'm sure, more questions, what is another good FAQ that you think people should really know? We've been getting lots of questions. Well, one of the questions that we've been getting is, what about open house signs? What oh. do we have to do if we're holding an open house? Do we have to comply with the advertising rule? Well, yes and no. If you are using a directional sign that has an arrow and the words open house, then you can use that sign. And you don't have to put any contact information, your name, the broker's name, or anything else on that sign, and you're just fine. But if you start adding additional information to an open house sign, like your logo, or your name, or your business name, then that sign would have to comply with the advertising rule. Okay. It grows from an open house sign to, to an, advertisement. an advertisement. Okay, so you're just putting arrows out to get people to the house. You're fine. You're fine. Um, and uh, I actually have gotten a couple of questions when I was out on the strategic plan tour that I, I always found really interesting and something that I think people are confused about. So I'm going to ask you a question. Um, so, for example, Keller Williams has uh, KW as their logo, and then mm -hmm. Keller Williams in words below it. Um, and then a lot of people have team names. There's a lady in our neighborhood that, that has, like, a team, her name, and then team. So she has registered the team name uh, with her broker, mm -hmm. Keller Williams, but she has all three of those on her, on her advertisement. So Keller Williams being the KW, the big sign, or the big word, mm -hmm. and then... Um, uh, Keller Williams written out, smaller, mm -hmm. very small, and then her name, her team name, much bigger. Um, and I, it's my understanding that that's not in compliance because the rule, the, what we're talking about is not the logo itself, not the KW, but the words Keller Williams. That's correct. So the, the logo is not the broker's name. You have to actually have the broker's name spelled out to be in compliance with our rule. Yeah, so that was something that I, I, I see a lot as I drive around. Um, people have logos, and they mm -hmm. think that that is the, what we're talking about, what we're saying, the name. So, again, Correct. think about it like, um, although we, most of us in the industry know what KW stands for, um, the average consumer may not know what KW stands for, and they're looking at what the name is so they can Google it after they drive away. And we want that name to be what people are able to identify. And then, therefore, the, the, the advertising needs to be in compliance with what the name is, not with what the logo is. Um, so I hope that helps clarify some questions. Our, um, so Joshua asks, our registered broker entity name is different from our primary company name. We use our primary company name on most of our advertising. Is this compliant? As long as you have registered your primary company name with the commission. Yeah. Then you're That's fine. That's all you need to do. Yeah. And that, that tool, again, Joshua, I'm not sure if you're the designated broker for the company or who is, but whoever that designated broker is, they'd need to um, add their, uh, get set up an account with the agency, uh, log in, and they can use the name management tool to make sure that everything's registered the way it should be and add any team names or business entity names, or sorry, um, team names or alternate names or DBAs that they need to under that business entity to make sure that they're in compliance. But that shouldn't be too hard to do. It sounds like you guys are on your way. Uh, Tammy says, what if the logo contains the words Keller Williams Realty? So uh, again, I think Keller Williams is very specific, and I was trying not to say like a specific broker, but that was the one that came to mind. Um, what if Keller Williams is the logo itself? Well, then you would have to make sure that it complies with the other part of the advertising rule. And so if that logo is half the size and the names Keller Williams Realty in the logo are half the size 
of the sales agent's name and contact information, then that would be fine. Yeah. But if that logo is smaller than half the size of the sales agent's name, then you would need to repeat the broker's name in the right font size to be yeah. compliant. Yeah. So I hope that that helps. Um, I know like uh, Remax, for example, you know, the word Remax um, is in of itself the mm -hmm. name of the brokerage. Mm -hmm. So that's okay. But I also know that they, at least this might be really old of me, um, you know, had the, the um, balloon, air, hot air balloon. Um, that is the logo. So again, you can't have a giant hot air balloon and then, you know, Christine Anderson team with no, like in killer or um, Remax really small below that. That's, that's not a compliance. What we're wanting is the name Remax. So um, to be half the size of my team's name. Mm -hmm. um, so William says, who enforces all of this? So again, um, I mentioned this earlier. Somebody was like, well, are you guys going to go through and double check all these names to make sure everything's right? Um, if we had the manpower, we would. But I'm sure you guys have all heard. We uh, have quite a backlog of other things we're trying to focus on. So by using the tool and clicking, I, I, I have legal authority to use these names, which we define what legal authority is for you guys today. Um, we are trusting that what you are saying is accurate. Now, that being said, if somebody files a complaint against you, whether it's an advertising complaint or maybe a completely unrelated complaint, and our staff goes in and looks and says, oh, well, clearly this stuff was all misleading and meant to be misleading, then we may go ahead and look at all of this other stuff and, and make sure everything's in compliance. So it behooves you um, to go ahead and get everything in compliance and make sure that you're doing it right. So if anything else comes up, but no, we do not have staff driving around the state of Texas looking at all of your advertising to make sure it's in compliance. We get that a lot. We People think like we're out there like, you know, no, we don't even have the legal authority to do like undercover investigations where we find people. Um, we do from time to time yeah. get people who will mail in yeah. a postcard or a copy of um, a sign or a picture of a sign. And in some instances, we will go out and verify whether or not that is correct. And if it's, if it's not, then we may send out a warning letter. Um, but also remember, you know, one of our employees could be on your mailing list. Yeah. And we frequently get employees who bring in advertisements and question whether or not they're valid. And usually, um, I might be overstepping here, Mark, but usually your enforcement staff, if that's the case, like, for example, I'd bring in, like, somebody was, like, this advertising was, like, wonky or just not in compliance. Usually we kind of reach out and say, hey, we see that your advertising isn't really right. We're going to give you a chance to just go ahead and get in compliance. We are not out here to like find you and like find a way to get complaints. That's not what we do. Most That's of the right. time our staff picks up the phone and just calls I mean, our, our goal is to help you comply with our rules and the laws. Um, you know, we're wanting to make sure that if you make a mistake that we can help you get into compliance and, you know, move on. Yeah. We really just want consumers to be able to find who's in charge. So if there's a problem, they can co file a complaint with us and we can take a look. That's, That's ultimately right. what the basis of all of these rules are. Um, so Rachel um, has a question about, could you have examples? We actually do, Rachel. If you go to our website and put in um, the words on the search uh, bar, it's available in all these places, but the easiest way to find it is just to put in Trek Advertising Presentation. Mm -hmm. I uploaded a PDF version or uh, uh, of a presentation the first time we did a presentation on these new advertising rules. And in that presentation, there's a bunch of examples of compliance and how, how to get in compliance and uh, examples and pictures of way, ways that it's advertising should look. So that's a great resource for you. And it's actually linked to on this, um, on the page I was uh, showing you guys before on the name management tool. At the bottom, you can see I have linked to all of our previous uh, presentations on this where we clarify in detail how to get in compliance. Um, today, we were really just wanting y'all to kind of go over some of our most frequently asked questions and go over this tool. So, so um, anyway, go ahead and check out that. I think that'll be helpful. Can we show them on the screen where sure. to find that? Sure. So I'm going to minimize me again, and we'll go over here. And in here, you're going to put Trek Advertising Presentation. 
and there you go. Trek Town Hall presentation. Sorry about that. Advertising came up anyway. But it's the first one right here. And it's a PDF. You're going to just open it up. And in here, you'll see all of the different um, the, the examples, details. This was a presentation we did a couple of months ago on the topic, all the rules, the history, why. And then at the bottom of the presentation, um, this is actually from a class, a course that we provided mm -hmm. when we went around the state for our name uh, for our um, our listening tour. This was part of the course. Um, so this is actually like a course on advertising. We just went ahead and published this presentation for you guys. So we did. Good idea, Kristen. So you can see here that we have exactly examples of how things are looking, why or why not they're in compliance, and how to get in compliance. So hopefully that's helpful for you. Um, and uh, uh, you guys can find that pretty easily. What I can do is I'll link to it um, in our uh, in this uh, event, and uh, hopefully we can link to it for you guys, so you guys can find it again too in the comments. So look for that when I have a chance. Um, does anyone else have any other questions, concerns, thoughts uh, as we're moving forward? Oh, it looks like we do. Okay, for purposes uh, of. Okay, so Mark says that he answered this, but I'll just go ahead and reiterate it. For the purpose uh, of identifying brokerage contact information uh, for signs, will the brokerage website work in place of a phone number for the broker's contact information? I believe that that's accurate. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. The, the website of the broker would work for the broker's contact information. Sorry, guys, I had a frog in my throat, so I was swallowing something <laughs> to drink. Um, so, yeah, uh, and I think that's actually in the definition where Mark, who's answering these questions live for us, um, he put the definition of contact information in here for you. And in there, contact information, one of the, one of the uh, things that we defined as contact information is the website. So that, that does work for you. So hopefully that helps. Um, let's see. Um, so if we already have our name and it does include the term realty or group. Are we good or do we have to change? Ashton, great question. The question, really, um, it, the, the, the answer to that is where, in it, it, where does group fall in the name? Right. If group <laughs> is at the end, then you're good to go, even if you have the word realty in the name. So if you have the name Sunshine Realty Group, then that's compliant with our rule. If... Uh, you change it up, change up the order, and say something like um, the Austin group of realty. realty, then no, that would not work as a team name. Team names, period, end of sentence, must end in team or group. And again, the tool that we have launched will not allow you to create a team name or group that doesn't end in team or group. And That's right. Yeah, like if you have anything listed as an alternate name because that's how they used to be categorized and you when you're a broker and you're going in to clean this up and you go to move them over to team name if it does not end in team or group it will not allow you to move it so mm -hmm. keep that in mind um must end in team or group and if you have and i think don't conflate the realty and group as two two of the same things it can't end in realty it needs to end in gr an, uh, group or team. That's right. But it can have realty in the name. Correct. So Kristen War Warman Realty Group is that fine. Works. Or Kristen Warman Group. It doesn't have to have realty in it either. So That works. Yeah, just making sure it was clear because <laughs> um, I know there's a, a, a lot of <laughs> confusion. So let's see. Our registered broker entity name is different from... Okay, so that was the same question. Question, if you or your agent's link from social media accounts to your company website homepage, which has a link to the consumer notice and is, yes. Leslie, we answered that question earlier today. Mm -hmm. That's the one click thing that I was explaining. Again, think of it, so Facebook's kind of hard because mm -hmm. it, it's a little bit different um, because they allow you to add so much more. But um, really, if your website is in compliance with the IBS and consumer notice po uh, posting requirements, you're good. As, uh, your homepage needs to be in compliance. And that means, um, again, you need to make sure it's on your homepage in an easily identifiable place. That's right. And for your social media, your 
web page, the link to your web page needs to be in just your user need to, needs to be in your user profile. Right. So it can't be like you're putting a link to your web page like off in some other random place on social media. It needs to be in your user profile account. Again, a common common sense thing, guys. If uh, right. if a consumer is looking on your Twitter page and sees a listing and needs to contact you, they're going to go to your user profile to find like your phone number via your website. So again, they're going to click on your user profile, see your website. Oh, look, your website not only has your contact information with all of your advertising already in compliance, but down on that page, you also have your IDS. IDS. Right. So that's the, that was the goal, was to allow you guys some flexibility, not having to post the IBS on every single tweet. <laughs> right. Isn't there like a character limit yes, there? Yes, there and is. So it'd be kind of hard to smash it all in. Um, Robbie says, they just say, you must have a broker's contact information on the sign um, is why I was asking about website as contact information is why I asked. Okay, Robbie, I'm not really sure. Um, well, I think that gets back to the question we answered earlier from Kinski. You have to have your name and contact information, and then you have to have your broker's name. So we have to be able, or the consumers have to be able to find you, and then they also have to be able to find your broker if they have any sort of question about something that you've told or done for them. Okay, so um, so somebody asked about landing pages. Okay, does the same apply to landing pages for ads on Facebook that redirect to your business page where your consumer notice and IABS is linked? So I'm, I'm assuming you mean by like, so your landing page, again, we're conflating two things. Advertising requirements and posting of IABS are two mm -hmm. different rules. Yes. Two different requirements. Yes. So we want to make sure we keep those things separated. It's a little bit easier to, to keep that, um, not, not cross our streams here. Right. But um, Tim, I think what you're getting at, and you can tell me if I'm wrong, is does the same apply to landing pages for ads on Facebook? I think what you're saying is if you're if they click on an ad on Facebook and they land on another website, does that website need to be in compliance? And the answer is yes. Um, again, if it's an automatically generated advertisement, like you've done a paid to boost, and but you can't manage the content within the actual advertisement, again, for IVS and posting requirements, as long as it's one click, they can go to their homepage and that page is in compliance, then you are fine. As far as the advertising, in your advertisement on Facebook, you need to make sure that your advertising is in compliance with the advertising requirements. So again, uh, making sure that you have your broker's name and contact information on there. Sorry, your, well, your broker's name. Your Sorry. broker's name. So your name and contact information. And the broker's name. And then the broker's name. <laughs> Man. I know. <laughs> We're just going to confuse everyone. Sorry about that, guys. Again. It's, it's really supposed to be simple. We tried to make it simple, and we don't want to confuse you. So it's your name and contact information and your broker's name. Okay. Renee says, I'm a broker of record for another company. The name of the company is Casa Realty LLC. Is this in compliance? That is how it is registered with TREC and the state. I do not own the company. An agent does. Do you want to answer that one? Well, if Casa Realty is the name of the brokerage that you're doing business under, then that would be the name that you could include on your advertisements. Regardless of whether you're a broker or a sales agent who works for that brokerage entity or broker entity. Yeah, the business arrangement of like how things are paid out of and who owns the business entity. You, Renee, are the designated um, uh, designated officer, designated broker mm -hmm. for that company. And you are the one that's going to manage the name. So you need to make sure that that Casa Realty LLC is listed as um, a, a, an entity, not only are you, that is in compliance, but alternate names within that. So let's say Casa Realty is just Ca Casa Realty and your advertising is Casa Realty. Then you need to make sure that's an alternate name or sorry, a DBA. Yes. Um, so that, I hope that helps clarify for you some of your question. Um, and if it doesn't reach out to me again and we'll make sure you get in compliance, right? Yes. Okay. Um, Hi, will you be doing a Q&A again later? Uh, okay, sorry, no. Can you clarify uh, what broker info is required on your personal Facebook page if a post, if I post any real estate business on that page? 
So again, this is a this is something that we get a lot. Is like I have a personal business or uh, po personal Facebook page that I advertise my listings on. Um, that is considered a business Facebook page, even though it may not be your main business Facebook page. If you are trying to drive clients to come and drive business, that is considered a business yes. website. Yes. So again, that needs to be in compliance with the advertisement requirements. So you need to make sure that you have the contact information, as we stated before, clearly on that page. And again, it is subject to the one-click rule that in your user profile, even if it is just your personal page, um, you can link to a website in that user profile. And that website needs to be the website that is in compliance with the posting requirements and advertising requirements as set forth in our rules. I hope that helps. Um, but the ad itself has to be in compliance. Yes. Oh, yeah. Yes. But uh, but he's saying like I I believe, and again I'm speaking for you. <laughs> like you're on your my Christine Anderson individual Facebook page, right. and I just post like, hey guys, I have this new listing, and I post it. Um, again, that is technically trying to drive business. I'm sure you're not yes. just like informationally sharing this information. <laughs> yeah, you know, if one of your friends are interested in buying the house, you're trying to drive business. So again, that's considered a business Facebook page or a business website, and therefore then it needs to be in compliance. Yes, that's correct. And um, maybe I'm overstepping here. I'm not an attorney. But I would say anytime you have a question of like, should I do this or not? It's probably best to overdisclose and just overdo it. Just, yes. just, just if there's any question at all, none of this stuff costs money to do. Um, and so it just it's doesn't better, hurt. <laughs> it's better to over disclose than to not disclose at all. Yeah. And again, um, you know, from a business standpoint, it doesn't hurt to be able to, for, to have all of these names accurately managed means that people can find you easier on our website. They can make sure that, you know, they can That's see right. your, your status, your education. All of those things are really good for business as well as just consumer um, information. So go ahead and disclose if you can. Well, and that's correct. I mean, as a real estate agent or broker, I mean, you're always trying to develop new contacts because that can lead to new business. So it helps to get your information out there. Okay, Derek asked one, one last question here, and then we're going to go ahead and, and try to wrap this up. I don't. I want to be a cognizant of everyone's time today. Um, is that only for public posts, or are you able to send a private message? Yeah, of course. If you're sending a private message and you're not like – like you're just on your Christine Anderson Facebook page and you're just telling a single friend about like a message. But again, Derek, what, like what's the harm in putting a link to your website on your Facebook page and, and having that website be in compliance? There's nothing wrong with that. And there's, it's not hard to do. And that way then you're, you're sure you're in compliance, but no, if you're just sending like a, a direct message to somebody about a listing that's coming up and you're like, Hey friend. But again, if you're trying to develop a relationship with that person and that's how your first contact is. Again, that comes back to the requirements for delivery of IABS and how that goes, not just posting requirements. So then we get into a whole other webinar. So Right, <laughs> right, right. I mean, it, it, again, it really just goes back to, you know, how well do you know this person? And um, is this the first time you've ever talked to them about your business? Yeah. So guys, we're going to go ahead and try to wrap this up. Keep in mind two key things today. Advertising uh, FAQs are on our website. They're they quite thorough. Um, so before you uh, have any questions here for us or try to email us, check out those FAQs. Our staff has taken a lot of time in updating all of those, linking to the rule references, making them um, easy to read and understand. So reference those, share them with as many people as you can as they're really helpful. In addition, we have the name management tool. We have a link on our homepage there for the name management tool, how to use it, and a video that you can share um, and reference. So as you go in to start to use that tool, you can understand it better and, and know how to use it. So um, today's uh, presentation is just really covering those two things. So if you have any other questions or anything like that, we will keep following up with this um, interaction off to the side um, in the chat and so make sure everyone's questions are answered today. Um, but with that, we're going to go ahead and say thanks. Thanks, Kristen, for your time today. Well, I was glad to be here and appreciate answering all the questions and, or appreciate all the questions that everyone yeah, asked because, 
you know, we want to get the information out there so that everyone can be in compliance. Yeah. And Mark Moore, thank you for the, uh, uh, our enforcement director for the uh, side answering questions. Um, he's always extremely helpful and knowledgeable. So again, post your questions here. If you, uh, if you haven't gotten it answered, we'll make sure that they get them answered today. And thanks so much for joining us. We will see you guys soon. Thanks again.